So a while ago we made a very simple power inverter and today the objective is to make that power inverter grid synchronized. In other words, to make it capable of pushing power back into the grid. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about the challenge that we're actually facing here, right? What makes a grid synchronized inverter special? How is it different from an ordinary inverter that we've already built? Well, in order to understand that, I've drawn something on this whiteboard. <laughs> so what we have here is a graph with voltage on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis. And this line represents the voltage on the power grid. As you can see, the voltage on the power grid constantly goes up and down like this. And here in Europe, it does that 50 times in one second, which means one of these periods, one of these up and down cycles, takes 20 milliseconds. Now, the output from an inverter might be very similar, if not exactly the same. So then why can't I just connect the inverter directly to this power grid? Well, it all has to do with timing, or phase, as we like to call that. So, even though the inverter might produce the same type of waveform, how do we know that it has the same timing as the one from the grid? I mean, if I connect my inverter to the grid, how do I know that when I press the button, how do I know that it turns on at exactly this point? I mean, it probably doesn't, unless I'm extremely lucky. Right, more likely it's going to turn on at some other point in time, like let's say right here. So we're going to get something like this. Right, and it's going to produce the same waveform, except it's shifted. It doesn't have the same timing. It's not in phase. And that's a big problem, right? Because what's going to happen in that case is we have a positive voltage there, and we have a negative voltage there, so we're connecting a positive to a negative, so we're just producing a massive short circuit. It's kind of like if you're charging a battery, right? If you charge a battery, you connect the positive side of the charger to the positive side of the battery, you connect the negative side of your charger to the negative side of your battery. You don't connect them the other way around, because then you're producing a short circuit, things are going to go wrong, you know, your battery is going to explode. More likely the, the charger has some protection circuit built into it, but you know, you get the point. So if we want to successfully feed power back into the grid, it's exactly the same as charging a battery. If the grid goes positive, we need to produce positive as well. And if the grid goes negative, we need to produce negative as well. So if we want to feed power into the grid, we need to produce a waveform that starts here and is exactly in phase with the one from the power grid, like so. So a grid synchronized inverter is a special type of inverter that synchronizes itself to the grid. So it actually monitors the voltage on the power grid and synchronizes itself to it. So it turns itself on at the right moment, and then it also keeps itself synchronized as time goes on. So now we need to go into the shed to the inverter that we built last time, and we need to modify it so that it can do this, which sounds easier than it is, probably. I haven't tried it yet. So this is the inverter that we've already built, and this is the circuit diagram that belongs to it, right? So it produces AC right here using this circuit board which I've explained in the last video that gets fed into a transformer over here and that transforms it up to 240 volt AC on the output and then in the last video we connected this output to a fan and then the fan started to spin so the inverter works but now of course we're going to want to connect this output to the power grid so plug it into a power outlet and then synchronize this inverter to the power grid so that we can feed power back into the grid. And so in order to do that, what we need this inverter to be able to do is to monitor the grid's voltage so they can synchronize itself to it. So the way that's going to work is we're going to add a wire right here. And so that wire is going to allow us to monitor the voltage in this point. So if you connect this inverter to the grid without operating these two MOSFETs, right, so the inverter is effectively still off, but it is connected to the grid, in this point we will see some kind of sine wave 
which represents the grid voltage. Now that won't be 240 volts AC because we've transformed it down, so it'll be some much lower voltage, probably around 6 volts AC. But we're not interested in the size of this voltage, we're interested in the shape and the phase of this voltage, because that allows us to set the timing of the inverter which we, that we just talked about, right? So that voltage needs to be monitored by this microcontroller so that it can then switch on the inverter precisely at the right moment, as we just discussed. However, there is a little bit of a problem, right, which is that this voltage is a little bit too high for our microcontroller to handle, because this is probably going to be around 6 volts AC or something, because what I think this transformer will output, but also it's going to be floating on top of the plus 12 volts of our battery. So it's going to be more than 12 volts, probably higher than 12 volts, whereas our microcontroller can only handle 5 volts on its input. So what we are going to need to do is feed that voltage through a voltage divider. How do I draw this properly? Which is connected to ground. For reference, this is ground, right? And then connect this to the microcontroller. So basically what this will do is just a couple of resistors or a potentiometer that'll shift down the voltage so that it doesn't destroy the microcontroller. But the basic principle, if you don't really get this, it doesn't really matter. The basic principle is that the microcontroller will monitor the voltage in this point, and that is what's going to allow it to turn on the inverter at the right moment. So we're going to add that wire to our circuit right now. So now that we've modified the hardware of the inverter by adding that sense wire, now we're going to need different software to run on this microcontroller that'll take that information into account so that this can actually run as a grid-tied inverter. And that software is going to work roughly in the following way. So through that sense wire that we just added, the microcontroller is going to see a sine wave, which is of course, you know, our mains AC sine wave coming from the power grid. And what we want to do is we want to activate our inverter right on this zero crossing. So as it goes from positive to negative, that's the point where we want the inverter to be activated. Or on this one, or the next one, or the previous one, doesn't matter, right? But any time there is a zero crossing from positive to negative, that's the point I want to activate my inverter. However, that zero crossing is difficult to detect because our zero crossing isn't actually on zero volts because we are attaching this inverter to our, our battery source, right? So this will actually be floating on top of our DC battery voltage. So, you know, the zero point will be somewhere down here and this sine wave will be floating somewhere up there and that's not actually zero volts, so that's pretty hard to detect especially considering that this can actually go up or down a little bit. This can shift up or down, depending on the state of charge of our battery. So this is pretty much impossible to detect. What we can detect is a peak, right, because that is just going to be our maximum voltage, or at least a local maximum voltage. So if we can detect a peak, then we can also get to this zero crossing, because what we can do is we can detect that peak and then simply wait for exactly five milliseconds, perhaps a bit less considering program overhead, 
And we know that that's the amount of time between a peak and a zero crossing. And so if we just detect that peak, wait five milliseconds, then we know that we're at that point, and then we can activate the inverter. And so that is what the software is going to do. We just need to plug this USB cable into my laptop, this into our DC battery system, and this into the power grid, and then we can start testing if this actually works. So now I'm going to upload this code and in theory we're going to have a working grid tied inverter. Now the potentiometer that's on here, the old one, still works. So when I turn this potentiometer that'll increase the duty cycle and therefore increase the amount of power that we feed back into the grid. You can actually hear it's producing a bit of noise. Right, but the last thing that we need is actually a way to measure if it's actually working. Because right now, you know, it's, it's making a bit of noise. I can see the LEDs on the microcontroller are on. But I don't know if I'm actually feeding power back into the grid, right? So we're going to need to find a way to actually measure if we're feeding power back into the grid. And if so, how much? So this is the solution that I've come up with. This right here is a very simple, cheap wall power meter. And what I had in mind is that this would display a negative value if I'm feeding power back into the grid, right? So in theory, it would say, you know, 50 watts if I'm pulling 50 watts from the, from the outlet. And it would say minus 50 if I'm pushing 50 back into the outlet. But it turns out this thing doesn't actually do that. So this only displays positive values or absolute values. So if you push 50 watts back into the grid, it'll just say 50 and not minus 50. So you can't actually tell which way the power is going. So in order to solve that problem, I've also plugged in this cord, which is attached to an analog kilowatt hour meter. And the nice thing about this is that it has a disc inside it. Let's see if I can focus the camera on that. There is a disc in there that'll spin and it'll spin in that direction when you're drawing power from the grid and it'll spin in the opposite direction when you're putting power back into the grid. And also this counter will actually count back. So what we can do is we can use this digital device to measure how much power we're producing. And then we can use this to verify that it's going in the right direction. So now I'm going to turn on the inverter. So I'm just going to plug it into, plug it into the outlet. There we go plug it into my laptop. So right now we're using about 8 watts of power as you can see and I know that we're using power because on this meter if you look very closely you can see that the disc is spinning in that direction. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the potentiometer and we're going to see that the number on that display is going to change. So you can see it's down to six, five, three, one, and now we're at right about zero watts of power. So right now we're not drawing any power, we're not putting anything back, we're just consuming nothing. And now I'm gonna to continue to turn the potentiometer, and you can see the number goes back up. So right now we're at about 20, 21. And if you look over here on this meter, you can see, again, if you look very carefully, the disc is now spinning in the opposite direction. So we're actually feeding power into the grid. So we are now officially <laughs> a power station. And actually, we can go much more than this. We can go up to 50 watts. Possibly we could go to like 100, 200 watts even. And again, you can see that that disc... Oh, damn, the camera is so difficult to focus on these shiny surfaces. You can see the disc is clearly spinning from right to left. There you go. I can even see it on the display of the camera now. So this is definitely working. So, of course, we want to be able to feed even more power back into the grid. 
but these MOSFETs are getting a bit warm. They're not getting super hot, but they're getting mildly warm now, and they will warm up a bit more if you leave this running for a long time. So possibly if you put like a cooling fan over here, you can produce a lot more power, because this transformer could do up to, you know, about 200 watts, I think. So then you can feed about 200 watts of power into the grid, which is, you know, not too bad for a DIY grid tied inverter, I think. There you go, we're up to 60. 70 70 watts of power into the grid now of course there is room for improvement because the efficiency is not that great because if you look over here on the DC power monitor we're drawing about 100 watts of power or more and we're only putting back 70 watts into the grid so there is about 30 to 40 watts of power loss in our electronic circuit or in this transformer possibly in the transformer because we're driving it with this square wave, so we're producing a lot of power loss there. But anyway, that is the inverter working. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and of course, thank you for watching.